right. Let's get back to it. Uh, what, what was I doing? Oh yeah, so type must be known at this point, right? So we probably just need to say what this type is here, uh, which is gonna be a, a vector of create episode insertable. Is that going to, well, once I import it, is that gonna make everything happy? No, nope. why not? Okay, the trait bound handlers, episode structs, create episode insertable. Um, create episode request is not satisfied. Consider deep referencing. Okay. Can we do that? Is there a precedence thing? Do I have to do this? Oops. Nothing like that. All right, because we're moving it. Okay, so fix that, I can implement huh. can I, do I even have to explicitly save the body here? The type there? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Now, <laughs> isn't like that. Um, hmm. So that makes this happier. doesn't like that. It has to be a borrowed create episode request. Okay, and that's what then makes this unhappy <laughs> is that um, we didn't previously had an implementation. We didn't, didn't have an implementation that uh, would take the borrowed form. Um, I guess. Uh, and that's why, so when I tried to dereference episode here, the issue was that then I'm essentially, uh, well, I'm moving <laughs> the value. I'm taking ownership of, of the episode from body.records inside of the map if I dereference it here. Um, and that is a problem. So I need a from that takes the, the borrowed version. Uh, but that does mean I do need to clone strings or do something. Um, that clone. Fine. Dot clone. on ah um so now this has to change we need to like map i don't think that works either yeah, same issue Let me do its thing. Yeah, that's still an issue. Uh, we have to do like, we have to map over the option. Huh. Uh. No, that, that's not the issue, is it? Can 
that move out of body data description, which is behind a shared reference. Move occurs because, uh, hey, borrow checker stuff. Here we go. Um, <laughs> because body data description has type, option of string, which does not implement the copy trait. Map or else takes ownership of the receiver self, which moves body data description. Um, what if I just did map? How do you feel about that? Still don't like it. Thank you. Map takes ownership of the receiver self. Okay. Um, so what we, I think maybe this is a, a case where we can just use match. description and then clone okay this is easier because it's just a string same for these other ones it's the body description being an option that was <laughs> giving some I'm surprised map took well I mean I think we already saw that right because we're getting a reference here yeah, anyway. Um, body that tracks. Can we clone that? Can we just clone all the things? No. The method clone exists for struct vec track, but its trait bounds were not satisfied. Uh, track doesn't implement clone. Doesn't derive. Can we do that? It depends on whether these things also implement uh, drive clone, which apparently they do. All right. Just making copies, copies of things. All right, so that makes this happy. I guess we don't need that prelude anymore. Well, that was for the syntax we were using, how we were building the uh, the records to insert here. Uh, so we also don't need it here. But the issue now is that well, I could I could borrow body to make it compatible. Um. Precedence. Nope. There we go. How do you feel about that? How do I feel about that? Um, I could implement from for the the unborrowed version, or just create episode record a request. Uh, I'll live with this for now. Okay, so now we take in two separate implementations of the same thing and combine it into the single um, implementation of the from trait. Now, the question is, does, does this implement the thing that we care about? The use of video ID? Yeah. Good. And tags and category. Notify subscribers. This was what was missing in the create bulk version. Um, cool. All right. So what's next? So add field and episode record for YouTube video ID location. So I think we've done that. We got like the um, the actual, like the schema migration stuff to add the column. 
um, and the API stuff to handle it and wiring that to the database. Um, okay, so the next step is I wanna update the UI to leverage the new filter and to show the field in the edit and create views so that we can actually provide the ID manually. Um, one of the things about um, React Admin as like an admin CRUD tool, so this thing, is that this is ultimately not what I wanna have for the main interface for this application. This is like an administrative interface so that I can go in and look at individual records and manage things and it's a it's a stopgap so I can you know look at this and work um, on things and have it tying into the back end until I build the actual workflow UI um, which I I have <laughs> been working on some bits and pieces of um, uh, off stream here and there and at some point we'll get into that um, but I think right now this is more interesting so, um, right, files in question are in the front end directory uh, and resources, episodes, we want to change create, edit, and list. I'm going to close the back end Rust files and migrations. Um, and we do have some uh, some errors from uh, ESLint because uh, I recently updated ESLint and got things kind of cleaned up and we should um, not have any here. Is there like a list action props? There is, there we go. The, these things we can fix pretty easily. I make those uh, warnings go away. Okay, so in the UI, we can, uh, we have filter button, create button, render. Okay, where are our filters? Here are the filters. Um, we have a title filter, series ID, stream ID, stream name is published. So I'm gonna add a new one um, called this is going to be a nullable boolean input, just like is published is, and this is going to be a nullable boolean input. Source equals has uh, YouTube video ID. I think that's what I called it. Verify that. There we go. So that was the filter in the back end. So that that's all I have to do. <laughs> to make it so that we can filter based on whether the video has a YouTube video ID attached to it, uh, the episode. Uh, and then, so we're not gonna have the list view show the video ID, uh, but the create and edit views are going to support um, declared, but it's never used, interesting. Well, that's we can get rid of that. All right. So this is the episode edit component. And I probably, let's put it right here. We'll do a, um, it's just gonna be like a text input. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing on create. Um, I don't, I suspect I don't have is published in this view. I don't see it. So this will be after the series. And the unlikely event that I want to specify the 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 ordering when I'm creating the episode, I'll include that input there. Um, it wasn't already in there. Good. All right. So um, that at least will update the UI immediately. Uh, we have to let me go ahead and start a build of the back end. And 
And uh, yeah, so I can remove this filter. I should be able to add a filter for has YouTube video. Yes. Now this is not going to do anything yet until the, the back end uh, builds, but you can see in the in the, the URL bar. As YouTube video ID true. All right. So hopefully today doing the build and other activities will not cause the stream to crash like last week. Fingers crossed. Uh, and then uh, otherwise this will actually work, which would be nice. Um, and then once that happens, the front end will re refresh. And what I'm expecting to see is that uh, there are no results, right? Because I've not put the YouTube video ID um, obviously in any of the records because I just added the column. Mind over magic. Uh, Iriago, what are you referring to? <laughs> oh, looks like that finished. All right. Um, so I was expecting this to be empty and it's not empty. So we have a bug. Hooray. Why? Why do we have a bug? Um, back to API. SFC handlers episode get list. So has YouTube video ID is the filter parameter. Uh, which should be present. So this part should be evaluated. And then we're checking to see if Q equals the string true. If it does, we say that this should contain the condition YouTube video ID is not null. Okay. So what is actually happening though is the question. Let me uh, get PG admin open. Maybe we can see the query that's hitting the database. Episodes. Episodes where a bunch of conditions. where one equals one. So this looks like the query that would have been used to pull the data for this view. Um, we
wonder if there's a way to just, without having to drill into each connection, see uh, the, the queries as they come through in PG Admin. If there is, I don't know what it is off the um, you know off the cuff, but uh, let's just keep trying. Um, okay, why why might this not be working? Uh, do we have something in uh, code here? So this is the episode get list. We are looking at episodes, yeah? Episodes. So this is the right place. Create predicate is what's being called. So build predicate uh, twice, once to get the count, total count of records, to match that, and then another time to be passed as the filter for the actual results. Um. filter itself, the thing we're passing to create predicate, is coming from filter, or it's coming from our parameters, coming from the, the query parameters, and then we are unpacking it, it's JSON. Okay. We don't have anything that like short circuits evaluation here. All of these things are evaluated. So we look for has YouTube video ID. It's right there. Um, what if it's not as STR though? If it's as pool? Right, because it's a boolean in the in the JSON, not a string. So this is probably what I actually need. So let's rebuild that. So I, I'm guessing what's happening um, with the, the version that I was just testing was you're trying to read it as a string. It wasn't a string, and so we were getting back a none here, and so the filter wasn't being. for the, uh, the build to complete. And it's done. Okay, so, no results, hooray. <laughs> As expected. So, uh, what next? Well, um, I guess one thing I could do is check the other direction. There we go. Um, and then, test this out. So do we see, there we go, YouTube video. Uh, should be the, 
ID of it. Uh, let me go back to YouTube Studio and I'll grab an ID and put a uh, an ID into the record. This was number 75. This one. So if I save that, I want to check uh, once the loading indicator is done or even before that, let me refresh. There we go. It retained it. If I go to the episodes list and I say has YouTube video. Yes, I should get one result. Okay. Um, no, I should not see episode 75 anymore. Yep. It's not there. And if I cleared the filter, and we do see it. If I remove the filter, we should still see it. Okay. And then if I add the filter back, yes, there we go. All right. So, uh, <laughs> What were we doing? Where are we at? What's next? Uh, let's see. Uh, back to the project board. Update front front end to use new field. Great. Okay, now all of that was to prepare the way for doing the thing um, that I described at the beginning of the stream, which is we want to make it so that once the video is uploaded to YouTube and it's added to the right playlist that that video ID of the video is put back into the episode record. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to do, need to do to do that. Uh, one of which is to look at the API endpoint where the, um, whatchamacallit, sorry, I lost my, lost my train of thought there for a second, um, where we are actually doing the, um, right, so when the task processing stuff code uh, calls the endpoint, add the video to the playlist, which is not this, this is kind of the internal function, um, but here's the handler, add to pl playlist task handler. This is gonna return something. Uh, currently just an empty JSON response. It needs to return the, the video ID um, so that we can add another task that will get the video ID and put it into the database. Um, So, and what I want to do is I want to make this response, this JSON, look just like the response we get when we call the um, upload video handler, which also returns the video ID. Uh, so we're going to return a summary and a video ID. I don't have a fancy, I mean, I guess I could just do this and have it have the exact same shape the upload video task out, but that, that is exactly what I intend is for the endpoint for upload video and the endpoint to add the video to the playlist to have the exact same shape of response. So there's not any reason why I wouldn't in that case, just do that like so. Okay, so, I mean, that's, 
that's that, right? To also have the video ID. So that part is done. <laughs> that was easy. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to add a new something that is going to take the response that has the video ID and feed it to our other endpoint that's able to update the episode. Um, so this handler and the API endpoint, you know, in front of it that takes the up update episode request. And this is going to be interesting because so somewhere in here, we have some code that that lays out what the tasks are to upload the episodes to YouTube and add it to the playlist and all that stuff. Um, and that code is here. Right, so this uh, this code creates a task request, and it says, "Okay, first use this URL to upload the, the video. Here's the title, and here's the payload. Oh, sorry, this is the title of the task, not the title of the video. That's all inside a payload. And then data key is how we tell the task worker that does the task how to interpret the response coming back from this API." Um, and then this task request takes a next task, and this is the next thing to do. After this is done, then do this. Now, uh, this gets interesting. Let me think about how I want to do this. So, something worth noting here. Have I heard of the Seattle Wiki Meetup? I have not. Not heard of that. So this is gonna go, all right. What is it about? Is it about Wikipedia? Uh, so the way this works, though, is that based on the presence of the playlist ID, we either have this next task or we don't. So this is going to change because what I want to do is I want to have either two or three tasks here. Um, if there is not a playlist ID, then I want to upload the video and then I want to trigger a task that will um, save the video ID back to the database. If there is a playlist ID, then I want to do the playlist step in the middle. <laughs> No, you're joking. <laughs> okay, so how? How do we do this? I think what I want to do is maybe I can build the task template for the last thing. And then Oh, so playlist idea here is an option. So we'll just use match. We'll use jet match here. So let's say, uh, let, um, sync video ID task equals task template. Um, this is not the right URL though. This is going to be. Uh, what is the shape of that URL? I think I have to look at the Nginx config. So, uh, <laughs> play a fun game, stop this madness. No, no, no. This, this is what I do on Sundays. This, this is it. Uh, I think it's slash records. Um, episode, and then 
I don't remember. Let's see. Episode. Let's see. Where, where do we define all of the, the handlers? I think in main.rs. <laughs> this is the rest. <laughs> uh, episode slash record ID. Put is the update. Okay. Um, already I see a problem. Uh, let's see. So we are in a upload request. Do we have an, an ID for that episode? I see two problems now. Uh, I think... Where is the struct? Tube upload request. <laughs> I I kind of need you to cut that out. Uh, so we need an episode ID here. we need that is because otherwise how are we going to construct the, the URL so the question is how do we get that in there so how do we how do we make a YouTube upload request here okay, it comes from upload start task handler So that means in the front end, yeah, in the front end we're pass we're calling this endpoint, YouTube upload, and we need to include the episode ID. Okay, and we have a uh, we have a type in the front end as well, uh, so we just have to add episode ID, and that's gonna break something somewhere. Let's see, where do we call upload episodes YouTube? here um, and then this let's see ignore all the warnings <laughs> oh here we go property episode ID is missing in type okay so this is the part that we need episode ID there we go so don't don't ignore the warnings uh, all right, so then we call to task request. Okay, and this is where we are, right? So this, this is where we'll read that episode ID. So I had to like, um, we have the episode ID in the front end because in the front end, we're like looking at an episode or a list of episodes. We have to thread that episode ID through uh, all the way to where, where, where we get it here. Um, the problem, so there, there are a couple of, a couple of issues. So one issue is that the endpoint here for this episode, we need to make a put request for it to work right. It doesn't accept a post and currently the task worker always does a post request, right? So if we look at main.rs in task worker the request that we make to that url is a post request currently it always is so that's one problem the second problem is that the thing that we post um, is what's built by this built task payload build task payload um, and it is not at all like what we're expecting here, which is uh, this body, 
I mean, I guess it could be close, except, except that the thing, the, the, the video ID that we're getting from the previous task is going to be inside of this previous task data and not at all in the, uh, um, directly as, you know, a, a, an element inside of this, this struct here, this YouTube video ID. So one possibility, I think there's three possibilities that occur to me, three, three possibilities that occur to me right now. So one, I could give up on doing, <laughs> I could give up on doing this, this additional task and maybe change, um, the, the upload task to directly talk to the database, like in that code. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to like have knowledge of how to interact with the database in these task endpoints. That's not the kind of architecture I'm going with here, but I could do that. And that would be potentially a lot simpler until like I have database requests everywhere. Uh, but you know, it, it would get the job done. Uh, thought two would be, I could create a separate endpoint besides the existing, um, episode update endpoint that exists that would specifically accommodate how the task worker, um, packages the payload and posts the request. Uh, that has some appeal to it. Although that's just like another endpoint that only exists for this one purpose. Um, we have endpoints like that now, but those endpoints are not to then call something else or to re-implement internal stuff. They are to then call out to other systems, right? There is not another endpoint that we could um, call from the task worker. We needed to build this. Option three would be to extend task template and the, the task you know, structure to include more information about how to make the request to include things like the HTTP uh, verb. So whether it's a post or a put or whatnot, um, and to include a way to transform the payload, um, and the, uh, yeah, the payload here. So the previous task data and other things into a different shape. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go with option three. I want to do it in a way that doesn't change anything other than, or makes minimal changes to, uh, everything else. So. I will have to change everywhere I'm creating a task request and a task template because I'm directly creating them. If I had, um, like a method for constructing these, then I could make that where, you know, you wouldn't have to pass in those extra things. And then this other stuff wouldn't have to change. Um, so probably what this will look like is something like, um, maybe something like HTTP method. Post and um, uh, payload transformer none, right? And I'll just add those every place. I wonder actually. So if you look at this actually back in main. So is there a different, um, like, can we parameterize the method rather than calling posts we can call like requests. There we go. And then we pass a method 
and the URL. Ooh, we could do that actually I think. Quest. Oh, there is a from bytes. Interesting. Wait, can we do something like post? I don't know that I want to do this. I think I probably want to um satisfied samples you can do from bytes or you can do you do that I don't think I want to do that I think I want to actually do this for right now yeah. so that changed nothing that works the same way uh, as the thing I had before but now it's a parameter that I can I can pass in that I could potentially be reading from the task what kind of method uh, do I, are these serializable? I'm going to say no. Is there... as string. So I have a couple of options. I could uh, make my own enum here to represent the method. I could, I don't think I can add request method to the task. Let's try that. So if I go to the task struct, we're gonna add some things. We're gonna add, Hub HTTP method. Can we can we do this? No, because it's not serializable. I could provide a way to serialize and deserialize it. Uh, let's see. Do that. Hold on, I have examples. Uh, we have to serialize with and serialize with. Seri so those things don't exist yet, but I could do something like that. I think that's pretty nice. Alternatively, I could make my own enum that was serializable and use that here. Um, and then I could implement a thing that converts from my enum into a request method. <laughs> this is fine. I can I can always change it later. Um, this is all internal into this application. Um, so I'm fine with that. And then we need a, um, and then we could we could have a have headers too, um, but I need some kind of um, payload transformer or transform. Uh, so it's going to be optional, and it's going to be what is this going to look like? This needs to be some kind of like. Um, value sort of thing could this be just a vector of like a vec of I'm not gonna just make it like uh, uh, some arbitrary JSON I'm gonna do something where it's like um, string and string probably that yeah, that's gonna break some things so the idea I so what I'm imagining is this because this is gonna be something like uh, I'll have to 
find a crate probably for this. But what I could do that would be really flexible is do something like the first value will be the new key in the resulting payload. And the second string here, okay, maybe I should just make a struct to define this. Uh, so we'll do pub struct. Um, Payload transform. So we're going to do uh, destination key source uh, JSON path. That that is the intent, right? And that that's much easier to explain if I just made a struct that has that rather than me saying it. Right, so then we have that. And then this needs some things because this needs to be, you know, serializable. Uh, yeah, we can do all that. Now we need to implement serialize method and deserialize method. Uh, let's see if copilot can. There we go. Function serialize method. Um, deserialize method. I guess that sort of works, but is unnecessary. Like we could probably just use uh, request, oops, request method from bytes. There we go. Is that even <laughs> doesn't cause any errors. Uh, and then every place where we're constructing a task is going to be wrong. Uh, I also need to update task template because task template needs to have this information. Um, so that when we build the task that then we'll, when it's done, construct another task and then another task, that task template needs to have these same fields. All right. So this gets us the ability to specify the method to use and the is there a way to do like uh, provide a default for serialization does that work I should probably just check the docs for survey. Rust survey docs. Uh, macros, there we go. Using derive. Uh, okay, no, that's not actually the section I want. Uh, field attributes. Alias, uh, if the value is not present when deserializing, use the default default. Default equals path. If the value is not present when deserializing, call a function to get a default value. Uh, okay. So we can do that. Be like um, default HTTP method. I want to do this because what's going to happen is that, well, what could happen? You can imagine this, right? Um, I have pending tasks in Redis that are serialized and then I'm going to update the application and then it's going to read those tasks and they're going to be serialized in a way that won't be deserializable because I've added these additional fields. Uh, so uh, the default method should be post if that matches the kind of the default behavior. So a lot of stuff broken <laughs> that we're going to have to work through and fix um, and actually like implement this payload transformer logic inside of the task worker as well. Um, use the method. We can do that right now, right? Task HTTP method is now a thing that I can just use uh, and it will default to post for all the existing tasks that hypothetically might exist. Um, 
All right. So I'm going to take a break here, though, and I'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll continue uh, fixing all the things I just broke. <laughs> I'll be back. 